going for one month, charging out the sun See? when we can and we charging stations when we need to. You guys excited? Yeah. So if you look at our meters there, I have to calibrate the amp meter, especially when we're driving and the cool air is going over the panels. Panels like put out more power when it's cooler. This is a 1973 VW bus. We converted it to electric and added 1200 watts of solar to the top. Do you want it all the way up? It tips up so we can get the sun right when it comes up in the morning. As you can see, it also provides a nice space to hang out. We have a, a canvas tent that Velcro's in, so when we want to camp, we can enclose this area and have a nice sleeping area. So we will pull on average about 30 miles a day with this panel. Well, we're creeping up on a decade of driving this vehicle. I wish I really had more accurate tallies of how many amp hours, watt hours we've collected from the sun, but I bet we pretty much paid for the vehicle by now, especially with the gas prices the way they are today. <laughs> we just built this for ourselves and as other people were able to see this and not get them anywhere else we were able to start providing these for people so we're gonna build this year 1971 transporter into a camper not just a camper a fully electric solar powered camper okay here we go first time out of the shop for real First trip is like just monitoring all of our parameters, cell balance, cell consistency, battery temperature, motor controller temperature, motor temperature. Now this isn't just gonna have a few panels on top. It's gonna have solar awnings that come out the side. And it's these solar awnings that come out the side that are really gonna give us the kind of power we need to really make a solar electric vehicle viable. We're gonna have about 3,000 watts of solar when we're done facing in the sun. A lot of people try to put us into a category with Ford and GM or even Tesla. That's not who we are. Ladies and gentlemen, drop your main contactors, get set, go! I'm a hot rodder. I grew up street rotting. My dad and I built street rods, and the idea with street rods is you take a part from this car and a part from that car. That engine and that transmission and the best of every manufacturer, the best parts available, and putting them all together so that you can have the best of both worlds. Ladies and gentlemen, Frankenblower! There's a movement happening kind of what reminds me of what I've seen of the 50s when guys really started to hot rod cars. I mean, we're now electrical hot rodders. Break and blow and live! I am a builder, a designer, architect, and electric vehicle enthusiast and so this is our latest creation that we're working on right now uh, this is a little house that goes down the road on sunlight and that that is a wonderful wonderful thing we're making progress on sunray's gypsy wagon we drove it down the road yesterday pretty exciting we still think maybe there's a little bit more power to be had from this motor. We are pushing a pretty good sized vehicle. I bet this thing goes 6,000 pounds. Check out this thing. I mean, it is crazy. It's got a 20 kilowatt Perkins diesel under the hood to back up an electric motor and battery system. So I'm just here to kind of wire it all up, make sure everything's integrated. The controller's sitting right up on top. I'm just going to wire it up for Sunray. Got to solder these little connectors on for the encoder. So this goes to the motor so it knows when to give the motor its current. So we're hooking up the solar power today. Working and 
and uh, now we just need the solar to charge it up. So we just got the solar on. We have it on a little relay, so it's not actually charging right now. I got to connect it with my meter, but we're under the clouds right now. We've got about 1,225 watts up there. So we're pulling a 1.75, about 300, 300 watts or so. If you look up on top there, you can see the flexible panels. That's about 1,225 watts. There's gonna be another set of five panels. They're in the mail right now on the other side, bringing the total on top up to about 20, 2,400 watts. And then he's gonna add some awnings. So he's gonna get up near five kilowatts by the time he's done. It's gonna be absolutely insane. He's gonna be able to pull 100 miles a day and with his little diesel generator, he'll be able to drive, you know, even considerably further than that. There are no airbags in this vehicle. You can have plenty of power to run any equipment you wanna run. It's like a solar power plant that goes down the road that you live in. Uh, hopefully all running for free up in sunlight. We are preparing our Model 3 modules for Redfoo's E-Star. Very, very carefully, I'm going to remove the existing battery BMS system. So finally, we've got all three chargers in, and then we're going to put our little EVCC back here, which basically controls our proximity and pilot coming from our J1772 for the handshake there and the level two charge. And then we'll be traveling up linking up with our Scott Drive controller so everything's on the same network. It's kind of a no-brainer because now we have electric motors. They're fast. They're incredibly powerful. We're just driving the Redfoo E-Star right now for the first time. Pretty exciting. Lots of little things to, to tweak and dial in. We have the battery pack fully open. However, it is a good time to see exactly what's going on back there. We should be seeing two to 300 miles of range, 100 miles a day out the sun, it's unprecedented. We have batteries, which now the lifetime, if you take care of them, can be upwards 10, 15, 20 years. We have solar panels. You're talking about something that's putting out power for 25 years and then maybe going to 90% after that. There's solar panels that are carbon fiber. 500 watts of solar is 10, 20 pounds. It's ridiculous. This is the panel that goes directly over the, the top of the vehicle. Notice it's got a nice curve, so this does provide a roof. It's watershed and protection, you know, possibly even some heat insulation. So this panel is always charging on top of Redfoo's E-Star. You know, and you're not limited to just awnings on your RV anymore. We have about 3,000 watts of solar on top. So this will control your inverter and your charge controller. Um, so right now we're pulling 1.8 kilowatts. We're running um, the heater. So this is the battery management system. It's really a beautiful thing. And you put all this together, just like a hot rodder would put all the favorite parts together, and you have something really special. All right, guys. Here we go. I got my wool cap on because it's 25 degrees. We're leaving Wisconsin and plenty of cold to deal with with all our systems, but everything's happy. And here we go on our first run to my sister Lisa's, about 150 mile run. Let's go. Zero degrees. Everything is cold. My transmission fluid is probably like molasses. The batteries are warm. The batteries are at 70 degrees, so that's that's good. I'm the king of the cold. It's been difficult, and we're hoping when we get the nice weather, pull out our solar panels to make some really beautiful memories. And I think some of those memories hold even more weight when you go through a little bit of challenge. Aye, 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 aye. What happened when you try to avoid highways? You end up on dirt roads. If you can slow down and appreciate the time you have, then this vehicle is the perfect vehicle for you. It's kind of like the tortoise and the hare. The slower you go, the more range you get. So you actually get there faster by going slower. 
these vehicles give you the opportunity to listen up, listen in to Mother Nature, and let her tell you when to travel, when not to travel. All right, there comes our regen. You can see it come in here when he lets up. Negative 250 Newton meters. If you can slow down, everything you need is there. Oil's great, oil's fine. I grew up with Chevelles and Camaros and street rods and I love those vehicles and I don't think anybody has to give them up. But it sure is nice not to have to pay for gas. Make hay when the sun shines. But now that we're in some beautiful areas, we're gonna nestle in and get our awnings out and do some serious solar charges. So right now, with the advent of thin film panels, you can carry enough panels to pull 200 miles a day on a sunny day. No problem. It's not gonna be a weight issue. It's not gonna be a volume issue. It is, however, gonna be a deployment issue. So really what needs to happen is some pretty serious rigging. We've chosen to use some T-slot. The T-slot is ridiculous strong, 40 mile an hour winds, no problem. So Kira and I can put this system together in probably about a half an hour. It's kind of like putting a tent together. It's always a super fun thing to do. Now these arrays of panels can also serve as shower rooms and bathrooms and all kinds of other structures that you may really want in your campsite anyway. Come on in. This is just our really basic interior. We weren't commissioned to do a full interior in this one, but we needed something to live in it for a couple months. So we took this kitchen that was in the VW bus and our little refrigerator from our original VW bus. We've got this really nice big bed. It's about six foot by six foot. Folds up into a seat with three seat belts. So it's perfect for the kids and for Daisy. And then there's a little like extend a bed bench in the back that you can remove if you want. Let's see what the kids are doing. Are you gonna take some so we've been solar charging here to you know plenty to be able to run our lights, cook. You know we're just out here showing showing what you can do with these vehicles and the lifestyle of just being able to get out into nature, be able to stay a few days, and camp. It's nice to get out, way out, and be able to stay there. You don't have to run a generator. You don't have to come into town to pick up fuel. It's all right there. You know, you're, you're really sustaining at your campsite. You know, you can stay there as long as you want. So there's this big reward if you can slow down. Let the sun put energy in your batteries for cooking, for heating, for cooling, for communications, for whatever you need. And what it means for us is freedom. It means freedom. It means the freedom to not wonder if they're going to make it impossible for us to drive or power our homes or take care of our families or run our farm. You know, we can do it ourselves. That's your beast. <laughs> She's a beast, let me tell you. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, baby. Solarola is here. Hey. Red Foo meets the Solarola for the first time. We can do it ourselves. All the technology is there. You know, the prices are coming down. Used equipment is out there. And it's a wonderful feeling of independence. So that's, I think, the bottom line is to slow down and enjoy the freedom that comes along with that. Slow down, put out your awnings, kick back. The idea is you take that bench seat and then you put that in. And let the sun charge your vehicle up. And you know what? If you want, plug in. If you want, plug in. Hi! <laughs> There's a lot of electric going here. The new way is the future. Now this Solarola yeah. can charge these vehicles. I want a power station. So boom, bam. Now let's see what the what's the stats say. 
in here. Is it charging? Look at this, charging. This has got to be one of the first vehicles that is, can charge electric vehicles. It's getting eight miles per hour on the charge. So now this is like a battery bank. I mean, this is like- This is a mobile power station. It's a mobile power station. This can power the house. Sometimes we get power outages. We could drive this somewhere. Someone says, hey, and we can come out 220. So if you got 220, we can come out and power refrigerators, houses. So right now we're close to full. And this can store, what's the range? So top right here is like 180 miles. Now this helps me understand my battery temps, my controller temp, my motor temps. When it gets to 100, the red things are like, mm, that's getting hot. These are all the batteries. All those are the individual cells. Okay, this is the first time I've, I've been doing this because they left a couple days ago. This door, let's see what happens. Yeah, so this goes through here because it was a cargo van. And here's where the charge controller is for the solar. Here is some basic breakers to all the battery packs. But this is just the ultimate. I mean, let's take, for example, a crisis, you know, where everybody's got their bunkers, you know. But my thing is, once they know where your bunker is, they got you surrounded. It's like, but this is a mobile bunker. Like, I'm mobile, baby. I got, you know, GPS spoofing. You don't know where I am. But there's, there's a key. You might find me where the sun is. You know, <laughs> that, that's where you might. Because look, in an apocalypse, everybody's like, oh, well, I'll just do gas. Hey, look, there's no, going to be no gas. It's going to be like that, that movie. What's that movie, Mad Max, where they're fighting over gas? But if you're in the desert, the sun is there. You got instant power. So pow people are going to be coming to me, and I'm going to be letting them charge their phones. I'm going to say, hey, we got the restaurant. We got the cut, you know, boom, boom, boom. You know, because this golf cart is powered by Solarola. I've never plugged it in one time. Mm. So it's 100% working on solar, and we go to the neighbor's houses, the picnics. We travel all the time. Never yeah. plugged it in. And I've powered the house from this vehicle. <laughs> and we are ready to go. It's funny because we filmed a lot of bunkers and like I, you're the first person I've heard say, wait a minute, here's another way to do like a ro rolling bunker. This is a rolling bunker. We're going to have power no matter what. We're, the sun will be somewhere and if not, we will drive. You know, it's like birds fly south for the winter. So look at this though. I mean, we feel like we're driving in a, in a spaceship, <laughs> you know. And then look at this guy. This guy's a camper, my neighbor. Hi. But it's like, where does he get his power from? He's not gonna be able to charge his house. <laughs> so the idea is that you would go on long trips with this? I might go 10 miles to the beach, put out the awnings and stay out there all day. But there's a different rhythm to, to this kind of vehicle. Like you yeah, can't yeah. just say like, I'm gonna drive cross country in three days. <laughs> no, because, well, you could charge. So then you, you could just plug in. And yeah, you have you the same plug deal. in. But I am going to learn What's the flow of the sun? And if you are gonna go to the beach all day, you might as well put out the awnings and pull in 40 miles. Uh -huh. But first I can just go, I can go to Hollywood and back in a charge. That only will take like, you know, 30 miles. Whoa, uh, hold up, hold up. So this is an interesting thing. Ah, so something happened. Okay, so this is interesting. Uh, yeah, look at that. Hmm. Sorry. What's going on here? I can't go forward. Something happened. This, this is a solar? It's a solar vehicle. This is, this is new tech life here. It's new technology. I mean, it's right? It's new technology. It's not, it's a prototype. It's, it's, it's a like, prototype. Yeah. Hi. You have a new car, but you can't go forward. You have to go backwards. I have to go backwards. It's, it was, uh, it's just a, it's a skill building test. Yes, I think so. Um, it's a patience test. And this is what happens when an ultra customized vehicle that's made from scratch. These batteries, did they jump off? No. We're working it out here. It's a new thing? <laughs> this is my third drive. We might have to call Brett. Hey, hey. So we're on a test drive. It wouldn't go forward. Go in the back under the seat and you'll see a big switch. 
You always want to shut off your high voltage first and then shut off your low voltage. Did you put your 12 volt back on then? Okay. Okay, so now you're going to turn on your high voltage. Now, let's see if you can go forward. We are going forward now. Oh. Oh. You got it. Oh. Okay. We we're talking to some people that were helping us out, but they were obviously into gas cars. And they were like, this doesn't happen in my gas car. And I go forward in my gas. You know, they were trying to poke fun. But this is an experimental, futuristic sailboat mothership. Let me first stress that it's not a car. It is first a power station, then it's a home, an off-grid home, and then it's a car. And what I tell people about these vehicles is consider yourself buying a sailboat. Just like sailing, it may not be for everybody, but those that'll sail will tell you that there's nothing as good as sailing. And I would like to think that there's nothing as good as solar sailing. We're sailing, baby. Solar sailing. Let's go. And it's exciting. But the reason why it's exciting is because the possibilities of once I get this dialed in, because you got to pick up the phone until you dial the right number. But once you get it dialed in and I'm just cruising, chilling, you know, on the sun, going anywhere, parking by the beach, traveling with the family, with the dog, powering people's cars, you know. Right now, this is beautiful. We're driving in a, in a big kitchen. Can make some shakes real quick. I'm gonna do some frozen cherries. A yeah. little bit of cacao. So these are lentils, lentil sprouts. So these take about two days to get like this. Looks like that. Maybe some more ice would be nice, but. Ah, word of a van. Yeah. It's good. It's a lot of stuff going on in here. It's a lot of work, but the goal is, it's about independence, right? It's about freedom. And so the, like the next phase would be like, you know, you guys came in a time where we're still dialing it in. You know, yeah. if you guys would have came a month later, we'd be sailing, but we still, are sailing, we still got it going, it's just we have some hiccups. And this is, I gotta learn that stuff. But there's gonna be a day where there's an electric car that has its blinker on, I say, hey, what's up? They say, hey, I ran out of power. I said, oh, you know, I can give you a charge. There's gonna be a time where someone says, hey, the power's out of my house, I can't cook any food, I can come over, you know, we can use my kitchen. Well, how do I get there? I'll come to you, you know. So it serves so many purposes. Mm -hmm. like we don't know what's gonna happen. Like, yeah. things are getting weird. Yeah. I like to go the speed limit. Yeah. We can go, baby. I'm just, I'm just like a Sunday driver, you know, a sun, a solar roller, a Sunday. <laughs> it's like sailing. It's like when you get a sailboat, you go off of the wind. It's about the journey and just taking it slow. And that's what Solarola has taught me. It's like, you know, when it's sunny, you charge up, you hang out, you do your stuff, and then you, you charge up for a couple days and then you're off to the next location. It's more interesting to me.